Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to import tile sets and other 2D pixel art assets into your Unity projects. So generally speaking, a sprite sheet or a tile set is going to be provided as a PNG image. So I'm going to go ahead and find that image on my computer in my gather exterior pack. So here I have the PNG image. I'll make it thumbnail view so it's a little bit more clear. And we just need to drag this file into the project. So when I'm working on a Unity game, I generally like to store all of my art assets inside of an art folder. But you can store it wherever you want. If you want to create a folder, just right click on assets and then do create and then go to folder. So I'm going to go ahead, left click, hold and drag and pull this into the folder for the art Chris tutorials assets. And if you're interested in these same Pixar assets, I'll have a link in the description. So once you have your assets in the project, you can select it and then look to the inspector. The most important settings for Pixar is going to be to change the filter mode from bilinear to point and the compression quality from normal quality to none. These are important so that the Pixar will actually look like Pixar and there won't be any distortions or blur in the pixels. It'll just show each pixel crisp. So do that, go ahead and hit apply. And if you're bringing in an asset as a sheet, and if you're bringing in an asset as a sheet like this, then you're going to need to slice up the sheet into individual sprites. So I'm going to change sprite mode, and I'm going to change this to multiple. And then I'm going to click on sprite editor, and then click apply to apply that change from single to multiple automatically. So opening up the sprite editor, you'll see that there's a bunch of assets here, and we need to slice those into individual assets. So click on slice, and then I'm going to change from type automatic to grid by cell size. Since this is meant to be a tile set and assets that fit on individual cells, we want to slice everything into pixel size 16 by 16, and then hit slice. So now, as you can see, every single square where there is an object has been sliced correctly. Some objects may have multiple squares, and that's okay. When you're drawing on a tile set, you can just draw each individual square next to each other, and then you can create the complete object, which is bigger than a single 16 by 16 square. So assuming all of your sprites have these white boxes indicating the tile, you can go ahead and hit apply. So let's close out of the sprite editor. And if we click on this little play button lookalike next to the gatherers explorer pack, then we'll be able to see each of the individual tiles that we have sliced from that pack. Now to draw these assets onto a tile map, we have to create an object for that inside of our scene. So I'm going to right click in the scene and the hierarchy and go down to 2D object, tile map, and then choose rectangular. So generally speaking, when I'm building my tile maps inside of Unity, I'll create one tile map that is for no collision tiles and then one that is for collision tiles you can even have more than two and that may make sense as you go along uh, for sorting purposes for right now i'll just call this tile map tile map no collision and i'm going to duplicate it and then i'm going to right click on it and rename this tile map collision so in order for the tile map collision to have collisions on it, we need to add a tile map collider component. So click on add component in the bottom right and then type in tile map and you should be able to find the tile map collider 2D. So this will automatically create the collision shapes whenever you draw a tile onto your game map. So now for how you actually draw the tiles onto the screen, let's go to window and then down to 2D and then open the tile palette. Okay, so this is another window where you can select tiles and paint them onto your tile maps. So I'm going to left click on the name here where it says tile palette, and I'm going to drag it into the same window area where the inspector and collaborate are. So this window will just sit next to those now. Now, we be, now before we create the palette, it's important to note that when we drag all of these assets into here, it's going to create one tile map object for every single tile. So right now, they're not actually split up. So in this case, for this pack, that's going to mean having about 185, 190 individual tiles. And that could really fill up a folder if you just stuff everything in the same one. So I'm going to right click here and create a new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, tiles. I could even put a second nesting where I have the gather explorer pack and related files and a tiles folder specifically for that pack into another nested folder but just whatever works for you in terms of your organization so now we can go ahead and create a new palette and something important to keep in mind is going to be uh, in the inspector when you click on your pack the pixels per unit here so in this case i designed this uh, art asset 
for every square to be 16 by 16 pixels. So that is 0 0.16 for every 100 pixels. So if we took that as a ratio compared to the pixels per unit, that would be 0 0.16. And we need to know that ratio when we are creating the tile palette so that when we're placing squares, that one object actually fits into the squares. So let's go ahead and click on the tile palette and then click on create palette. And then we go to cell size here and do manual. I'm going to do 0 0.16 and 0 0.16. So this will make the cell size correct compared to the size of the tiles that we're about to create. So I'll rename the palette Gatherers Explorer, and let's go ahead and hit Create. And I'll create the palette into this folder. So let's just go ahead and choose. Okay, the next thing is going to be to take all of our assets and put them in this area so that we can fill the palette with tiles. So I'm going to left-click, hold, and drag this image over to here. You can uh, zoom out with middle mouse wheel and you can see that the shape of this is pretty much going to correspond to the shape of the original image file, uh, same dimensions. So you can just pick a spot for it, let go, and then it's going to try to create tiles for all of the assets in that file. So let's generate the tiles into the folder. As you can see, I'm putting it into the tiles folder, which we already created. So I'm going to hit choose here and then it'll take a minute to actually generate the files. So you can just come back in a second. Now, when we click on an asset and we want to draw it onto our grid, we may notice that the asset is not actually filling one whole square here. So the way we get around that is if you click on the grid and you go to the inspector, we can change the cell size. So a unit of 1.0 by default is 100 pixels. If we click over to the art, then you'll see pixels per unit defaults to 100 as well. So we want to have 16 pixels in each square that we're going to draw. So I want to take the cell size and bring that down to 0 0.16 and then 0 0.16 for the Y as well. Now each of the individual cells are going to fit 16 pixels. So now all the assets that we draw from this pack, which are designed for 16 by 16, are going to fit these squares correctly. So on the tile map, no collision, I can uh, select my grass tile and I'll just start drawing a box. And then you can start left click holding and dragging these individual squares onto the map. Now, as you can see, this covered the player from the previous scene and all of the coins I had. So if I want to manually sort that, I can click on Inspector, and then where it says down here, Order in Layer for the Tile Map No Collision. We can change the order in layer to something like negative 10, and I can do the same thing on Tile Map Collision. So just make that negative 10, which is going to mean that anything that has a higher ranking is going to show on top, which is what you would expect for the ground. So in the Tile Palette, so another tool we can use to draw a little faster is a field box tool. So it's you on the keyboard, or you can just click over here. And then you can click one area, a corner, left click and hold, and then drag an entire box around a region you want to fill. We can hit D to switch to the eraser tool and get rid of a few extras that we don't necessarily need. And I'll hit B to switch back to the brush tool to draw a different area. So over here, maybe we'll have a bit of a sand region. So for the corners, I'm going to use the other pieces. So let's just kind of quickly fill them in. So at this point, you might be wondering if you want to add something like a flower onto a region, if you just use the paint brush and paint on the same layer, then uh, clearly that's going to get rid of the other tiles that may be sitting on there. So you want to be able to paint something like a rock or a flower onto the grass. So to do that, you're going to need another tile map layer. So I'm going to actually take this tile map collision layer and I'm going to control D duplicate it going to rename this to be so I'll go ahead and call this doodads no call for no collision and if I go to the inspector I'll just remove the tile map collider here of course you can manually create a new tile map as well so now in the tile palette just make sure the active tile map is switched to that doodads layer and let's add some flowers to this region maybe some grass decals and a small rock which probably doesn't actually need to block anything so likewise, if you want stuff to be on top that does block collision, then let's just duplicate the time map collision layer again and rename this to be, I'll call it doodads collision. And then we can take these bigger tiles, which probably should block a player and put them in those regions. So I'll take the active tile map and then let's put it on doodads collision. And then I'll use these big rocks to paint onto here. So a trick if you want to use multiple tiles at once is just to left click, hold and drag. So we can actually drag all four of these tiles at once and place a rock with a single click. 
So let's just get a couple rocks in there. Now, one more thing to note is that if you're going to have interactable objects in your game, like for instance, maybe the rock can be mined with a pickaxe, then you may actually end up in the end creating these rocks, not as part of your tile map, but as a object which sits on top of it. So that would just be another game object, just like your player or the coins, where you would attach a script to it and it can be interacted with, such as when it gets hit by a pickaxe, start mining it and releasing individual rocks that could be added to the player's inventory. So using the tile maps like this is mostly just going to be for static objects that you never need the player to really interact with other than maybe collisions. So now let's start adding some rafts so that the player can actually walk across. So I'm going to go to uh, the menu up here and we'll use the no collision tile map. So now if I want to add some water, I can draw it on tile map collision. So let's just kind of fill everything surrounding the land with that kind of like so. So that way the player won't just be able to walk off the edge. And there would be different ways of doing this. But if you want to have like a bridge where they can walk across, then one way would be to not have certain water tiles actually be on the tile map collision layer, but rather draw it on the no collision layer like this. And you can see that there's no box around it for the collision. And then we can go to, let's say, doodads, no collision. And I will paint a couple of rafts here, which gives a visual indication that the player can just walk across to the sand over here. Let's just also go ahead and throw in a cactus here and maybe a couple other succulents as well. And then maybe a couple succulent plants as well. And I suppose I'll keep these on the collision layer for right now. It would be kind of painful to walk over a cactus. One last thing with the tile map ordering, you should make sure that if you're going to have doodads that are going to sit above your base tiles, that you give it a higher ranking in the order and layer. So I'll make doodads a negative five, which is going to place it above all of the base tiles. So now we can go ahead and hit play and test out the scene. So if I walk over to this rock, you can see you can just walk right above it and onto it because that's on a no collision layer. But this big rock definitely is keeping the player from walking across. So now let's try going over to the water. And there may need to be a little bit of an adjustment here uh, to get it to look completely right, possibly with the collider for the player. But as you can see, walking under the water normally not working, but we can go straight over this bridge area. So for the most part, that's working right there. And uh, this cactus should be a collision as well. The smaller cactuses as well. And down here and this one. So pretty much everything's working all right there. Uh, now you can notice I already had like some coins that you can pick up in this scene. To make an interaction like that happen, once again, those things need to be their own game object. So if you really do want to set it up so that you can mine rocks, you probably need to add a little bit of a script there uh, when a pickaxe hits it to generate rocks. So in my next video, I'm going to be showing how I can take the pickaxe or any of the other tools here and actually just create a simple animation in Unity uh, to show when the player is trying to mine something. But for this video, I'm showing how to import your tile set and start to use them, building up tile maps inside of Unity. So once again, if you have any interest in these same assets, I'm going to have a link in the description to my itch.io. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see you in my future video content.